earth architects face many such questions from people who like the look of mud houses but are unsure of its stability. The astonishing thing is, mud-based houses are not new. In our last video, we showed how humans have been using mud as building material for centuries, but sadly, it has lost its appeal over the years. If you haven't watched the first video, click the link in the description. In this video, we are going to answer the most basic question. How can you tell if the soil from your land is good to build a mud house? Even though a mud-based construction was very popular in ancient times, it is no longer the first preference for many at present due to several reasons. The main concern is the strength and durability of mud structures. All of us have heard about mud structures collapsing due to heavy winds, disintegrating during floods and infested with termites. There is a concern on issues related to rain erosion. So people definitely feel that plain mud, there is a possibility of erosion. If we look at technically, a plain mud, if you have a sample of plain mud and put it in water, it will disintegrate. That means it has no wet strength, but it has enough dry strength. The only other concern probably people will talk about is the termite issue. So these are more related to plain mud structures. Here, what we are trying to look at is stabilized mud, which means we are adding chemicals like cement and lime pozzolana. So these are stabilizers which will stabilize the mud and then give what is known as wet strength. Which means we make a specimen, immerse it in water, saturate it and then test it for compressive strength which is wet compressive strength. So both in dry and wet conditions these buildings can perform. And when we look at uh, this technology, we try to look at the local soil, whatever is available. That is why the laboratory is of great help to understand different kinds of soils available locally and then give a solution for uh, how to go about this stabilized mud. In India, we have many types of soils ranging from highly fertile alluvial soil to desert or arid soil. The sand, clay and humus content also differs from soil to soil. So how can someone decide whether the available soil is suitable for making mud blocks? The simple act of testing soil to see if it is fit for construction can help to address many of these concerns. It is a crucial step before building a mud structure or even making a stabilized mud block. So the laboratory is the heart of our activity wherein we try to understand soil, test the soil for all the parameters whatever may be required and then recommend a mixed proportion. When you look at concrete which is used in buildings or bridges or viaducts for metro, you have different grades of concrete. You have M20, M30, M60, like that. Similarly, we can do the mixed design in the laboratory for stabilized mud blocks or stabilized mud technologies, depending on whatever technique they may use, and come up with a solution to achieve that kind of strength. Here, strength means wet strength. It is not the dry strength. So even in a saturated condition, uh, the strength of the block will satisfy the structural requirements, so it is going to be structurally sound. There are a few key steps while testing soil. The process starts once the soil is sent for testing. The soil for making stabilized mud blocks is taken 6 to 8 inches below the ground level. This is to save the fertile topsoil. A portion of this soil is kept in the oven for drying. Once dried, the soil is put through a 4.75 mm sieve to remove stones and rubble. The dried soil is then wet sieved using a 0.75 mm sieve. This is to check the sand content of the soil. The soil is washed with water till the sand content is seen. This is again dried in an oven. 
Soil which has 70 to 75 percent sand content is ideal to make mud blocks. Adequate sand or quarry dust is added to the soil which has lesser sand content. Around 7 to 12 percent cement and 1 to 2 percent lime is also added to the soil. These act as stabilizers and increase the strength of the soil. It is then mixed properly and water is added to this dry mix. The soil mixture is then compacted in a cube cast. The soil particles are pressed down to reduce pores. Compacted soil will have lesser water infiltration and air expansion. This dense form improves the strength and durability of the structure. The density helps to control termite infestation. The soil cubes are then cured using wet cloth for 7 days. The cured soil cubes are immersed in water for 72 hours. This process is to test whether the soil is likely to disintegrate if exposed to long periods underwater. Erosion of unstabilized mud structures during flood is a common sight in India and is a concern for many who would like to build mud structures. The soil cubes which were immersed are taken out after 72 hours and they are immediately sent for a wet compression test. In this last step, the wet cubes are put through a compression testing machine. The force of the press is increased gradually till the soil cube is broken down or shows cracks. The wet compressive strength of the cube is noted. According to the Bureau of Indian Standards, the minimum strength of a cube should be 3.5 megapascals. If the soil cube is not able to meet this, it is recomposed with more stabilizers and sent again for testing. The testing takes 14 days. A comprehensive report is made after analyzing the strength and durability of the soil. Once the test result is found satisfactory, mud block production can start. Testing and stabilization of soil frees it from its disadvantages. Once the soil is tested, it can be used even for multi-storey structures. Soil is the most abundant building material across the world. If mud technologies can be upscaled and used for building construction, we can find a way to a future which is not dependent on cement and other environmentally harmful materials.